I don't know what battle it seems you have lost. I don't know what you're struggling with at this point. I want you to begin to worship him with our song. And looking at whatever situation it is in your life and see him do the battle. <laughs> and see whatever shaking is going on in your life and see him do the battle. And look at whatever opposition or warfare, whatever it is going on in your life and call his name it. Come on now. Mighty warrior.
what you are facing is insurmountable. It looks like all the gates, they are locked against you. It looks like the odds are against you. Come on, call it now. Is the one who is 
great in battle. Jehovah is his name, Jehovah, Jehovah. Oh, he's the one who is fighting your battle. In this one, you don't need to raise it. All you need to do is call on him. Mighty warrior, great in battle. Jesus. 
Joshua made bold to go to him and they, they say, okay, we don't understand this battle formation anymore. We know that God promised us victory. We know that God said we're going to march through this. But who is this person? What is happening here? And Joshua went to him and said, Sir, are you for us or against us? Because we don't know you. We can't number you with us. We know ourselves. And yes, we can't number you with the enemy because the enemies are still on the other side. They're on the other side of the river. I'm telling you, whatever battle is coming at you, the captain of the host of the Lord's army is already on your case. Ah, he has already overturned the battle before they come to your gate. Amen. And so he went to him and said, Who are you? Who are you, sir? Are you for us or are you against us? And guess what? The captain of the host looked at him. I'm neither for you nor against you. Because I'm not here to fight battle the way you think battle should be fought. Child of God, it's not going to be by your power and might this year. It's not going to be by heavy supplication this year. Because the captain of the host has stepped into your case. So I'm here to fight my own battle. I'm not in that agenda of fight the formation here. Do this. I say, oh, and every human strategy will not compare to what Jehovah will do for you this year. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. he comes with his own heavenly strategy on your case. And so he came and he looked at him and he's like, seriously, I'm here to fight my own. I'm the captain of the host of God's army. So I'm not the captain of your army. I have not come to cheerlead you on. And neither have I come as your general to lead you into a battle. I have come on an heavenly agenda to fight the battle in an heavenly way, in a spiritual way. He said, therefore, now undo all your ammunition. He said, lose your sandals. Huh? Yes. And that's what I'm telling you today too. That you have fought too much. You have prayed too much. You have harrowed over something too much. It's time for you to relax in him. Amen. He has taken up that course. And so he told him, relax. Losing your sandal, relax. Just sit down. Because remember, I said, I'm the captain of the host of the Lord's army. Meaning I came with my own army. You just are not seeing them yet. You are not seeing those army yet, but I came with them. I have come with another entourage that are not visible to you, nor visible to your enemy. Mm. Nevertheless, we will do the battle and you will enjoy the victory. Hallelujah. Yeah. I said this year, God will do the battle, you will enjoy the victory. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. And so he told him to relax, I'll do it my way. God will do it his way concerning you. Yeah. So you may have lost hope. You may have thought, okay, I, I, yeah, I've been overpowered. But the captain of the host, the one who is mighty in battle, the one who is a great warrior has stepped in today. After all our prayers, after all our waiting, even in the weaknesses of our flesh where we, are, we, we didn't even do it right, Jehovah knows. And Jehovah stepped in already. Hallelujah. You know, which is why I love that scripture when it says, lift up your gates, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door, that the king of glory may enter. And he's like, huh, who is that king of glory? <laughs> and he said, it's because you don't know his credential. That is why you are asking. If you knew, immediately, not only will you lift up your heads and open the gates, you will vamoose from that location. Child of God, they haven't seen you in manifestation yet. That's why they are opposing you. That's why they are planning. But today, as you are taking in and taking on Jehovah the mighty warrior, when Jehovah the mighty warrior appears on your behalf, every matter is settled. When Jehovah the mighty warrior shows up on your case, every evil verdict is overturned in the mighty name of Jesus. Every impossibility becomes a possibility for you. And I like the way they gave him the response. 
Say, who is the king of glory that she opened the door? He said, is the Lord. The Lord mighty in battle. <laughs> Meaning that if he comes against you, you and the gates will crash. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I give you praise. I just honor you in this house today for who you are, for what you're doing, for what you have done. Lord, be, we are grateful. Lord, be exalted. Oh, we are grateful, oh God. We give you thanks. And I'm also talking, I'm praying for somebody in the house today. You're going through a shaking at work. You're going through a heavy shaking that looks like you may slide. That looks like things may not work out well. But today, I make bold to tell you that things are fine. Amen. I make bold to tell you that the battle is over. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Where you left off. Where you put it down and you gave in and you gave up. Jehovah took it up Amen. and he finished it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, I give you praise. You know, I was talking with somebody I was believing a long way for something. And it looked like, okay, there's no go area here. And I said, this is the time for you to drop it at the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. This is the time for you to say, okay, God, I put it in your hand and I know only beauty can come out of this right now. And I say, every time... He comes to your mind and wants to torment you. Give him praise. Say, God, I thank you. I've given this one over to you. You have done it. Your way. Your timing. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to somebody in this house today? Because you will hear good news. In the mighty name of Jesus. So today I'm just going to quickly just itemize at least from the beginning. For, for, for the beginning, for the opening. I'm just going to itemize the strategy for strategic warfare going into great detail i'm just going to give you bullet point because we have so much to cover you know we always talk about this lawful captive captive of the mighty and things like that and i want us to look at it in a different way in a technical way and we're looking at it in a technical way so that we will understand warfare we will understand how things happen. We will understand what happens or what is happening in the spirit world. And then we'll be able to apply the strategy for warfare on it. And not just only that. We will also understand how to help other people come out when they have been overwhelmed. And then we'll start looking at divine ministration also. Because sometimes some of these battles, they are not just fought by, I rebuke you, I do this, I do that. You need a strategy from heaven. You need just a word from the Lord. And that is just enough to overturn everything. So we'll be looking at divine ministration and how to receive divine ministration as well. And I pray that divine ministrations will come to you Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And so we'll be, uh, so I'm just thinking of where to start, how to start, and I'll just start from the strategic warfare, and then we'll go into the captive of the mighty. From there, we'll continue on to divine ministration. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm just quickly going to look at strategy for warfare and strategic warfare, because we're dealing with the mighty warrior here. And you see, our declaration this year says peaceful settlement. For, for there to be a peaceful settlement, it means that there has been an arrest. Mm -hmm. It means that there has been a battle. Yeah. It, yes, it means that war and warfare has taken place. Yeah. But you will have peaceful settlement. Yeah. You see, all the, all the things that have been lining up, and the ones you are afraid of that you have run away from because of heavy conflict, Peaceful settlement comes to you Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So let's look at it. So you know the Bible says, having done all to stand, stand therefore. Amen. So in Ephesians 6, you will see where the Bible was listing out the warfare weapons, the weapons of our warfare. Amen. And so it was telling us, you know, put on this armor, put on that armor, the whole armor and all of it. And he said, having done all, after you have put on all the armor, and then you loaded it with prayer, and I said, now stand. 
Come on, is this a run? Sister, maintain your ground. So the fact that you have put on the whole armor does not mean that the battle stopped immediately. That's why I'm telling you, having done all, stand. Don't be afraid. You know, I was I used one video to teach in the Bible school when we talk about women in leadership and women in ministry. And when we do Cleopatra, we use one Cleopatra, one of the Cleopatra um, movie. And in that particular one, when Rome came and invaded Egypt. Egypt. And she was the one that was there. She and her brother, the the consul, anyway. And she ran. And she was the she was the queen. She stood there and she saw him and she was going, and then he pulled her back. He said, No, stay. It's like she, she didn't know that he was the he was the Caesar. Mm. She just knew that he was coming and they were all running away. And he told her, No, stay. He said, didn't you hear? They said, Caesar is coming. And he said, but you're the queen, stay. He said, no. <laughs> so he not told her, no, stay. So she stood there and she was doing like this. <laughs> not knowing she was already facing the Caesar. When the Bible tells you, having done all to stand, stand. Don't let fear kill you. Don't let fear make you run. Because you are already kitted in the Lord. And when your back is open, he's standing there. So there is no pulling you down. It just looks like they have done so. You are not going down with the world. It's not going down. So that's what the Bible is telling you. Know, it said, having done all, it says stand. So the leading of the spirit in prayer is very important to strategic warfare. So you have put on all the whole armor, the word, your faith. Everything because I'm not talking about the whole armor today, so that's why I'm not going into it. We'll do it another time. When you have done all of that, then this is the time for you now to start praying in the spirit because you need your spirit to open up to the Holy Spirit for you to receive divine ministration because your spirit is tuned to the Holy Spirit. But when I mean you need your spirit to open up, is your mind I'm talking about right now. So your mind needs to be able to draw out the things that the Holy Spirit is depositing in your spirit. And that's why you pray in the spirit. So when you pray in the spirit, your spirit is now, or let me put it this way, your mind is now able, is open enough to bring out things from your spirit. So that is why praying in the spirit is also psychotropic. It's like you're taking drug. It's like a high. Yes. But it's a spiritual high. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So do not go into warfare on your own. Number one. We have talked about the preparation, which is you putting on the whole armor. And we have talked about leading of the Holy Spirit and you praying in the Spirit to open your mind up into your spirit and into the Holy Spirit. Now, do not go on into warfare on your own. Do not underestimate your opponent, no matter what their size is. Sometimes your underestimating the opponent is what they are banking on in order to hit you from where you're not looking. But this year you will not be hit Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. So we saw AI, the AI battle that was in the Bible. The golf battle is not in the Bible, but we saw it happen sometime. The enemy was underestimated. The Cuban warfare, it happened in some lifetime. They were also underestimated. Those were battles that were not won. Because the bigger power underestimated the smaller power. Don't underestimate your enemy. <laughs> you see, something may be very tiny, may be very small. But it can bring down a giant. You know, they say for want of a nail, let me skip all the other things, a battle is lost. You see how huh? one nail missing, a battle lost. How is that possible? The nail is, feels inconsequential in the scheme of event. However, the nail is what holds the, the horse's shoe in place. And if the nail falls off, the horse loses his shoes, 
it cannot run well for Batulo. It's not balanced. And if your horse is not balanced, hey. So don't underestimate. In the Bible, the, Bible, the, the battle of Ai, when the children of Israel, when they had to go and take over Ai, they sent people, they, okay, go and look at the formation. And the people came back, they said, oh, those people are very careless. Oh, and they're few. And they are peaceful people. They don't even they don't even they don't even have affiliation with anybody, so nobody's going to come to help them. Don't let go full force. Let's just go with a few people. So, child of God, strategic warfare requires for you to expect the worst from the enemy and to understand that the forces at work in you will quell it. So the fact that you are not underestimating them does not mean you should overrate them to the point where you are paralyzed. That's what I'm telling you. You should just take into cognizance that this thing may look small, but it's not as small as it looks. And the, but the power of God at work in me is able to conquer it, no matter how big it is. But don't underestimate it. Do not reveal your strategy carelessly or for show off. Yeah, we've been talking. You know, this is how we're going to this is how we're going to win the battle. We'll do this, we'll do that, we'll do that. Do you know the people you're even talking to? Do you know whether they are infiltrators? Do you know whether that was a frenemy you're talking to, the very person behind what is happening? Do you know whether it's that person you're revealing matters to? Even God does not reveal all his strategies. So why should you reveal all your strategies? Don't do so. Do not reveal your strategies carelessly or to show off. Yes, I'll do this. I can pray. I can do this. I can do this. Okay. See, once you start doing that, then the enemy starts. That's what you'll be seeing warfare every time. Who wants to fight warfare every time? Okay, I can pray. I can do this. Okay, let's go. You know, it's just like somebody. Listen now. If, if you have two people and one person is just quietly just doing their work, you will leave them alone. Whatever they do, you evaluate it based on what they do. If somebody had boasted and boasted, I can do this thing, I know it very well. I know it like the back of my hands. When they finish doing it, you will examine it critically, more critically, because you're, you're finding fault. Do you understand somebody? Eh? Do not open too many fronts in battle. You're battling this, battling that, battling that. This person, there are some battle that you see, you step back from it. Not because you are weak, but because you know that there's something else behind that battle, and I'll give you a story. There was an occult man who eventually gave his life and became a pastor. And when he was preaching one day, he said, the way we used to attack people when I was in the occult, is that when we see a strong man, we don't go headstrong to go and attack the strong man. What we'll do, what we we'll usually will do will be to send small, small battles his way. So he's dealing with this, he's dealing with that, he's dealing with that. In that distraction, we bring the heavy one and more often than not, we strike. So when you are saying it, it's not everything you see that you will not put power. No, you know me, I will not give ground. Leave it alone. So you must have, that is why the leading of the Holy Spirit is important. You must have spiritual insight to know which battle to leave alone and just walk away. And to know which one. You see, there is a battle that when you fight that one battle, you will take care of all the other ones. That is the battle you should be looking at. Not, oh, they said this about me. I have to defend myself. Oh, this person said this. I have to do this. I have to do that. No. You must learn the act of worship as warfare. When some of those small, small, little, little annoying things, once they raise their head, go into worship. So worship is a strategy for warfare. Go into worship over those ones. Don't confront it. Just speak to it and let it be. So you need to choose your battle, that's what we're saying. Is it worth the effort you put into it? What is the implication of fighting or not fighting? 
You know, there was a message I listened to about 15 or so years ago. It said, the fact that you could spank a skunk does it mean you should? Does it mean? So what he's saying is, because you are capable of doing something, should you do it? Can you, should you, shouldn't you count the, the cost of that thing? Because in spanking a skunk, it can skunk you, and you are succeeding in spanking it, but you have a bigger problem to deal with. I'm praying for you in the mighty name of Jesus that you will recognize wickedness and wicked problems. And you will know how to handle them in the mighty name of Jesus. Inquire should I go? That is what seasoned warriors do. They don't just jump on the battle. Even when they have recognized a significant battle to fight in, they ask, should I go? Look at David that is a seasoned warrior. He always asks, should I go? Don't just say, because I'm powerful enough, I can do it, I will do it. Ah, no. And we will look at that when we are talking about captives. You will see where the children of Israel refuse or ignore to ask, should I go or what should happen, what should we do, and we'll see what happened to them. Avoid distractions. No soldier entangles himself with the affairs of this world and succeeds. You must realize and recognize that you are not an ordinary human being, that you are a soldier of the cross of Christ, that you are in the Lord's army. So when people are talking world, when people are talking mundane things, those are not the things you should be fighting about. Those are not the things you should entangle yourself with. Leave, leave the world alone to do the world things. You face the spirit and face. When I mean face the spirit, I'm not saying don't handle your chores, don't handle your responsibilities. I'm saying handle it from a higher place. From the place of the word. From the place of divine counsel. Focus. And I say focus again. Strategic warfare. Focus me. You see, when you are fighting and you are facing an upward, upward, in fact, I, I learned this in, uh, look, in looking at some documentaries of some fighters. See, they are here to fight you and they are insulting you instead. In the ring, you come here. This is what is happening to you. You, this, they abuse them, abuse them, abuse their mother, abuse their whatever, whatever it is that can get them distracted, that can make them lose focus. <gasps> you abuse my mother, who are going to fight? Because they know that once you go into rage, you lose your edge. So that's why they do that. So not only must you, as a seasoned warrior, as a child of God, not only must you be focused, you must be disciplined. Disciplined enough to ignore things that don't make sense, even though they are annoying you. You see, there is a way the devil can throw something at you and it looks like it has scattered your plans. Or it looks like it's becoming overwhelming. And once you get distracted, you don't have, you don't have that discipline to let it be and focus on God and focus on what you're doing. You've lost the plot. Because now, just that little problem or that seemingly big problem has removed you from the course of destiny. Because you just give up, you just say, I can't do this anymore. That's it. I'm gone. I say you will not give up in the mighty name of Jesus. Fight the good fight of faith. So there is a bad fight and there is a good fight. A good fight of faith is a fight that you are fighting from the position of an overcomer. So a, it is called a good fight because you already won. That's why it's a good fight of faith. You are standing in faith knowing that this thing has been defeated. Knowing that God will come true. That's why it's a good fight because you won. So a bad fight is you just brawling. Is you just doing whatever you just, you know, just doing anything. And they're saying, yeah, I don't know if God will answer me. That's a bad faith. It's a bad fight. Be systematic in your approach. 
except when you're being led by the Holy Spirit to do something unusual or to do it in an unusual way. Otherwise, be systematic in your approach to things. The way you, you see, once you, you put this out, you put that out, you draw all of them out, then there is room for conflict within you. There is room for confusion. But if you're systematic, then you know you can, you're going from, you're moving from A to B to C. Then when the Holy Spirit steps in, you can already sense the difference that it may not move from C to D. It may actually move from C to Z. Or the Holy Spirit can even tell you move from C back to A. And then you're thinking, ah, but I thought I was progressing. Follow the Holy Spirit's leading. Because he's the only one who knows the route from A that will take you directly to Z. Now, when you are facing opposition, quell opposition so you do not need to keep on repeating the same fight. You know, like when people, this is similar, but it's not it. When people have been delivered, they come for deliverance, you pray for them, come out through the nose, don't tear the nose, use the mouth, all of that. When you've done all of that, the devil has run away. The next anointing service, they are the same one coming for the same devil. The next anointing for the same devil, what has happened? They didn't fight the battle to the end. They didn't finish it. So in their own case, the devil may have left them, but the deposit he left behind was still working. The devil may have left, but the conditioning of their own body to that demonic operation keeps operating and they think that the demon is still there. The demon is gone. It's only you now operating that. Now, but in the case of fighting and quelling opposition completely, it's like if you just say, move back, and then you're relieved, which is what a lot of us do. You're, somebody or something is oppressing and closing in, and then you manage to push them back. Some relief. Ah, that's enough for me. Phew, some breathing space. No, finish the battle first. Until the enemy is on their back, until they run away or they are completely destroyed, don't give up yet. Fight the battle to an end. Retreat only when you have to reassess situation. Don't just go back. And a lot of us Christians, we are the ones running and the enemy is running after us. And it should be the other way around. They should see you, they should run. I say enemies will start running from you in the mighty name of Jesus. They will see you, they will see the glory of God. They will see you, they will see the armor of God. They will see you, they will see the impossible weapons that they have to face and they will run. And I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus that the same way that God led Joshua to do the battle of Jericho, he will give you an unusual strategy to whatever you're facing in Jesus. Unusual strategy for speed up operations. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord has done that for you already. The word of the Lord. The prophecy from his mouth to your heart, to you, will continue to work wonders in your case in the mighty name of Jesus. And you also have to be aware that some warfare are inspired. Some physical things you're facing, they are inspired spiritually. So don't do all, don't do all physical, physical, and don't do all spiritual, spiritual. When people bring stuff to me, I look at it both ways. What are the physical things that are happening or that they are predisposing you to this? I look at it. Because those things may be opening up the spiritual realm, giving space, um, cracks for your attack. And sometimes some spiritual things may be predisposing you to acting in a foolish way. You know, they said when somebody has been primed to do something or somebody has been spoken to spiritually and the person was open to receive it, you will see the person will start acting in a certain way to make that thing come to pass. Whether it is the Spirit of God that is empowering you 
or the person has been open to a demonic spirit. You just see them acting in a particular way. It's just like maybe somebody that has been programmed to die. Then you will see them step into the road without looking. But it is not your own car that will hit them. Amen. That's what I always say. It doesn't matter who has programmed you. When you reach me, you will be deprogrammed. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Because it's not me that will be writing story. <laughs> he stepped in without looking. Let me give you a testimony to the glory of God the Father. And so, beginning of this new year, we went, we traveled, and we were just returning, myself and my husband. And so we were driving back home. And all of a sudden he said, oh, let's just stop by and pick some of the stuff from so it's, it's not very far and so we just took the detour and i was like i mean i really wanted to go and i was like oh yeah why not let's go and as we just made that detour and we came down from a bridge and we were going you know we were talking but after a while i was just i was looking this way instead of looking at him and the talk and then i saw two children they were talking by the side and i heard they will cross the road thinking oh but thankfully i actually just said it even before they did i said those i said look at those children who crossed the road but by this time they already crossed the board they were talking to each other just like this and like this and two of them crossed the road and i was shouting jesus help us and my husband swept bro did whatever he needed to do but one of them was under the car anyway. And the other one had run back. So I was looking at that one. But my husband just stood there. And I was shouting, the child is under the car. The child is under the car. Jesus, bring this child out. And then my husband looked up. He said, no, the child has moved out now. But how is it possible that a child goes under your car and they move out? So I'm telling my mom, I'm telling him, knowing my mom, I was actually saying, I said, I said the child is under the car. He said, and I'm telling you, the child is now on the roadside. <laughs> and so we came out. And these children, they were actually standing there. And by this time, their mother and the other people were there and they were beating them. Oh. Imagine, it's us, they would have been beaten. Mm -hmm. Nobody would remember that they crossed the road without looking. Except that that was the enemy's plan for us to enter into trouble early in the year. But the what oh father, I just give you praise. But when I talk about spiritual strategy, when I talk about listening to the Holy Spirit, I tell you, child of God is important. And I'm praying for somebody in this house today. I say you will not enter into calamity in the mighty name of Jesus. Anyone that is planning you, they will fall into it by themselves. And so we had to go and rescue the children from the hands of their parents. And so I carried that one that was under the car. And her pants were red. So she was actually under the car. So I began to ask. I said, what happened? Because I had the crush. I was sure that girl was crushed. And so I picked her. I said, what happened? He said, it was when I fell under the car that my hand became like this. I said, God will deliver you from trouble. I said, God will deliver you from any form of utterance, of conspiracy that is meant to end your day, to mend your year, to mend your life, to, to end your year, to end your testimony. I said, God has delivered you already in Jesus' name. We will not fall into it. For us, it was a testimony. So my husband said, so how do we actually would have been saying this. Nobody would remember. And then people were greeting us. Ah, thank you very much. Ah, that man really tried. Ah, thank you. We're like, which man tried? It's God that helped us. I say, in the place where they have put your death, where they have put your defeat, where they have put your destruction, they will congratulate you in the mighty name of Jesus. They will celebrate you in the mighty name of Jesus. So things happen, but God happens for you. Amen. 
And so my husband is like, so what nonsense are we even going to pick up? That will not be writing stories. I say you will not write stories. Yeah. I say whoever has been programmed for destruction, they will be the program concerning you. Amen. When they get around you, the program. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Their own calamity will not spiral down to you. Amen. Their trouble will not involve you. In the mighty name of Jesus.